Hello friends, it's Kayla. I'm currently filming for another video, but I just had something tweeted at me. So, I need to know what it is. Hannah Hansen, today we're challenging Books and Lola and I need your help. Okay, I just saw a little preview and I saw a pink book cover that I think I recognize. But let's figure out what's going on. Hi, my name is Hannah and I have a book recommendation. But okay. you see, it's a very special book recommendation. This is because it's designed for one specific oh person. Oh my god. Kayla from Books and Lala, I'm looking at you. By the way, hi Kayla, I'm Hannah. Hi. We've never talked, but no. I'm convinced I have the perfect book recommendation for you. So Hannah and I follow each other on Twitter, but um, seeing this, it was to me, she also has a booktube channel that I didn't know about, so I, I will check that out in just a second. <laughs> this is iconic, by the way, okay. You see, you don't know this, Kayla, but we both share a mutual admiration for weird books. Okay. And I recently read a book called Places No One Knows that I think encompasses everything we both love in books. <laughs> I'm talking teenagers and anxieties, okay. unexplained magic systems, okay. and that sweet, sweet Maggie Stiefvater-esque writing style that we both love. Okay. It's my perfect book. So here's my challenge. I am so convinced that challenge? you will love places no one knows that I am willing to bet my favorite book on it. What? What the do you mean? Raven Boys. And not just any edition of the Raven Boys. A signed first edition. Wow. So here's what I'm proposing. If you read places no one knows and don't give it at least four stars, I will send you my first edition copy of The Raven Voice. So, you either find a new favorite book in the process, or get sent a really cool edition of one of your favorite no. books. No. Honestly, Kayla, what do you have to lose? Nothing. That's right. Nothing. What I want, you got, but might be hard to handle. Okay, okay. First of all, Hannah, incredible. Second of all, I'm not taking that book from you. Even if I don't end up loving the book, I'm not gonna take your book, but listen. While my experience with Brenna Yavanoff is not zero, I haven't read a full length novel from her. I have seen this cover before, but I have no idea what it is. Her, along with Maggie Stiefvater and Tess Granton, used to or currently still have a website where they wrote short stories. And they also worked together to write these two books that I absolutely love called The Curiosities and The Anatomy of Curiosities, which I recently recommended. I've also read two of her short stories in here, though I don't remember which ones are hers or if I enjoyed them. But I'm gonna go ahead now and thank you for the content and do a weekend reading vlog of one book. I apparently didn't write my ratings down in here, which sucks, but her story was called Vega. And then in Toil and Trouble, she wrote a story called Daughters of Baba Yaga, which I also didn't write. So I have not done myself any favors. I went and looked at my video reviews for these two books and I said barely anything about this book besides that it was three stars and most of the stories were terrible. And then a year later, my review of Toil and Trouble. Still need to update um, my Goodreads which I never did with all of my individual ratings for each story. My favorites were by Elizabeth May, Emery Lord, Emery McLemore, and Brandy Colbert. So anyone but Brenna Yavanov. <laughs> I've never thought to pick up a novel from her before because her covers look like this, which just doesn't look like something I would enjoy. However, this cover, a little different of a vibe, a little bit more of my vibe. So let's look into it. Places no one knows, more like places not in stock, AKA everywhere. Nowhere in the Okanagan, no bookstores have this. Let's talk about this cover for a second because I once talked about my favorite things on covers and one of them was people falling. I'm just saying, didn't I say that? It's probably like five years ago. I also have a thing for people falling. I've noticed that a lot. Like there's a girl falling, another girl falling. It says, follow me and disappear. Waverly, her name's Waverly, that's cute. Waverly spends her nights running until she can't even think. Then 
what then the sun comes up i forgot how to read life goes on and waverly goes back to her perfectly hateful best friend her perfectly dull classes and the tiny nagging suspicion there's more to life than student cancel and gpas marshall holt is a loser he drinks on school nights and gets stoned in the park he is at risk of not graduating he does not care he is no one he's not even close to being in waverly's world okay so good girl bad boy vibes but then one night waverly falls asleep and dreams herself into marshall's bedroom <laughs> And when the sun comes up, nothing in her life can ever be the same. In Waverly's dreams, the rules have changed. But in her days, she'll have to decide if it's worth losing everything for a boy who barely exists. I've never read that synopsis. If I had, I might have picked it up. I've also talked about the fact that I'm picking up more and more pink covers as my life progresses. So, you got me. It's had 3,000 ratings and has a 3.7 average on Goodreads. Goodreads also says for fans of Lauren Oliver and E. Lockhart, whom I do not enjoy. It could really go either way. So I'm going to track down this book and we're going to go for it. You're along for the ride. Cool? Cool. Okay, I've ordered a lot of things from thrift books lately and I don't fully know what this is, but if it's what it is for this video, then you're seeing this clip in this video. If this is the package for this video, it came super fast. Normally thrift books takes like six weeks to arrive, but it's only been maybe a week. So, wow, it is. Okay, this is longer than I thought. This condition is not what it claimed to be, but it's readable. It was donated by Penguin Random House. Okay, I don't know where this came from, but I literally couldn't find it anywhere 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 i had to order it second hand and it's clearly been well read and loved so that's great um i'm gonna read it now i just finished doing a live show with chanel and zoe for when no one is watching and i am currently caffeinating if you guys haven't tried the brown sugar oat shaken espresso I promise it's life-changing. I've had three of these in the last like 24 hours, 48 hours. I don't normally get one this big, but Rob brought it home for me, so I'm drinking it. I am going to read this. I feel like this is going to be a couple day read, but I will let you know as soon as I read a little bit, like how it's going. Okay, I organized my shelf into pinks and purples so I can take a nice picture for Instagram. Now I can't get the book to slide in there. <laughs> I'm listening to a really great live show right now about um black trauma in books so kind of what i'm up to i only read the first couple of pages of this so i have no real thoughts so far but i want to take a picture to make sure i could share it on my instagram the day this video comes out i feel like i get asked all the time how i do these photos and and that's it i just i tightly pack a bookshelf i slip a book in i make sure it's between two hardcovers so it's like nicely pinched and isn't gonna slip and that's it I'm 20 pages in and she has described him as having uh, eyes a complicated shade of brown. So that's where we're at in life. I really just want to establish the tone of this book. Like I want to understand if it's going to be like metaphor or if it's serious like fabulism. Right now it's a classic setup of like good girl, bad boy, but obviously they both have more complexities to their personalities and I think they're gonna bring that out in each other like that's just the vibe that I feel I'm hoping it's pretty comparable to like Emily Henry and the feelings that I get uh, from the way that she writes her characters if it is meant to be like super romance centric I guess we'll see okay I'm stopping at page Where's the page number? 69 at um, a phrase that just made me very much connect with the main character who said, and I quote, I don't do anything I'm not good at. And if that's not my life mantra, I wouldn't say I'm really enjoying it at this point, but there are so many books that start out with me like feeling indifferent towards it. And then it just gets like really good. We've been introduced to all the characters. We've gotten a little bit of an insight or like little what am I trying to say like a couple moments of her sleep weird situation but other than that it's a lot of like high school drama and it's interesting because our main character um 
is talking about like how she is intentionally playing like this social game at school like she doesn't really care about anything but she has to pretend to care and her and her best friend like crafted um her way to popularity i'm not feeling like super intrigued enough to keep reading which means like i'm leaving 300 pages for myself for tomorrow i'm just having a hard time focusing in general and i feel like a lot of people relate to that right now i've actually switched up my entire tbr for march because i had this video plan and I just can't, I do not have the energy to fully commit to the idea. I tried to listen to the audiobook for a second because I was like, well, I can't focus. So like, let me listen and be told the story. But I really don't like the narrator for Marshall. While I do appreciate that we have two narrators since it's dual POV, it's just an okay reading experience so far. What? are my eyebrows doing okay well it's sunday and i was supposed to film all day but these clouds have just appeared and made the house very dark so i'm waiting to see if they clear up and i was gonna read for a little bit while i wait but molly just went live and she is currently doing reading sprints with a bunch of people but she's reading house of leaves which is the literally dead book club pick and I need the motivation to get into this. I read the first like five pages and I got really overwhelmed. So I'm going to use her as my inspiration to get into this. I know this vlog is like a weird, like all over the place weekend vlog. There is a purpose, but I know people also want to see me read a little bit of this. So I'm definitely not going to finish this this weekend, but I will give you some thoughts on that. So I'm going to try to get to like page 20 and just let you know my initial thoughts of this before I get back into the other thing that I'm reading. I'm literally starting it in the next sprint and I'm scared. How did you all do? Okay, it's dinner time. I'm making something I've never made before. So if it turns out well, then I'll show it to you and give you the recipe. If not, I'm just gonna be eating a lot of kale, just like silently and crying if it's not delicious and I'll never show it to you. I read the first 20 pages exactly on the dot of House of Leaves. I actually saw this uh, thing on Instagram that was like what you use in your book as a bookmark and I'm pure evil. Everything that I use as a bookmark was in that um, bottom category. So this one I just memorized the page that I was on so I can get back to it when I want to. Liam's playing video games, ignore him. But even in the first couple of pages, like I've been genuinely unsettled by this book. So I don't even know how to describe it to you at this point, but we're learning about these like little um, videotape clips. And it's kind of reminding me of The Ring, the movie, like the creepy <coughs> videotape stuff. Liam's also sick. Like. I'm excited to get back into this now, but I'm worried. Like I'm really worried because this entire vlog is hinging on how much I like this book. Like I'm invested in liking this book. Hannah's invested in me liking this book. You're all with me now, invested in me liking this book. We all want this video to go in a certain direction. It feels like a lot of pressure. And I still just like feel okay about it, but I'm still only a third of the way through. So I'm taking my time. I normally would be listening to like the audiobook as I cook dinner, but I want to give it my full like best shot at enjoying it. So I'll read it physically after dinner. See you in a second. Okay, I haven't tasted it yet, so I can't promise it's delicious, but it looks so good that I want to show it to you. So it's kale and sweet potato and a little dressing and feta and avocado and an egg. Did I say sweet potato? Parsley. Parsley. Pepper, salt. Lemon. Love. Oh, and love. There's dinner. I'm very excited about it. Okay, bye. Okay, here is a quick update. Things I'm enjoying, I like the back and forth between the different perspectives. I find that the chapters aren't too long or too short. We get just enough time with each person. I like the magical situation, like they're together, but then in real life, they're both like, did that really happen last night? Was it a dream? But I do wish there was more magical stuff involved or like, um, mysteries revolving around the magic. I'm not sure. Sometimes I like fabulism, it's just fabulism, and sometimes I want, like, at least the characters to want it explained, even if we don't end up getting it explained, if that makes sense. I really like Marshall as, like, a love interest. Um, I find him 
I don't know, like if you're swooning over Peter Kavinsky and how respectful he is and like how that's not the typical uh, guy that we get in Netflix movies and books, like Marshall reminds me of that. He's very respectful. Um, he's not always making the best decisions, but he always has the best intention, I feel. Bare minimum, I know sometimes, um, but that's just something to note. And lastly, I love the little subtle references to Pink Floyd, one of my favorite bands. Um, I just, I love that. I feel like this is one of those YA books that you can really tell is not written by somebody who, somebody who hasn't been a teenager for a while. Like the references are, are pretty old. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think like, is this for sure written in modern day or is there supposed to be like a time line that I missed? I don't know. Maybe it's one of those books that like could exist in any time and like that's the magic of it. What's say up? hello. I mean, say goodbye to Rob's beard, everybody. That a really good run. But I wanted you to be here when we lose it. God. What? really soft. Ah! Oh, I'm still zooming. Oh my god, this camera is crazy. <laughs> I just zoomed in so far. But you like the mustache, is that alright? I just like forgot you had a top lip. Okay, I've got like a quarter of this left and I'm going on a walk by myself. It's a walk that, oh my gosh, I have Raven Cycle socks. Okay, that fits with this whole video concept in general, kind of. Um, but I was gonna say, like, the one thing that I am, or the one tie I can really make between this and the Raven Cycle that I'm enjoying, besides just like the weird magical element, sorry, I have to put my socks on now, and it's gonna be a bit of a struggle, is I appreciate a main character who, like, I appreciate all main characters. I just love that in the last, I don't know, like 10 years of YA, we've gotten so many different, um, like kind of social representations of teenage girls. There's somebody coming over here. They're done their hike. I'm starting mine. Now you can see me from this angle. But like it used to be, we only got characters who were like super popular and vapid and that like type of protagonist or more often the protagonist who's like really unpopular and really uncool who gets bullied and has no friends and that type of protagonist where are my running shoes and what i appreciate about blue oh wow this is really working for us it's not that blue from the raven cycle or waverly is her name from places no one knows just are completely outside of like a traditional female character but i like that they're both characters who have like a sense of social awareness like where they fit in the systems in their schools and how intentional they are with their roles and how just like aware they are and like how hard they're trying to like be popular or be seen as quirky so i'm gonna listen to a good bit i mean i'll have it on two times speed because that's how fast I would like read the book with my eyes anyway. So we'll see how far I get, but I do plan to finish this book today. Like clearly it's not a weekend reading vlog anymore. The week work week has begun and now I just need some alone time in the woods. I'm not gonna bring my camera with me because that would be obnoxious to carry around, but it's like, it's scenes you've seen before. You, we're here all the time. Maybe I'll film some clips on my phone just for fun of my little feet going through the woods, my headphones in my ears. Let's play a little bit of music. Okay. Okay, listen. I <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Um oh no. I was trying to figure out a way to come on here and like round up my writing or just like lie. Look, my camera can't even white balance properly right now. We're both struggling, my camera and I. Let me try to figure out how to talk about this book. Um, I'm being dramatic. I didn't hate it by any means. Um, 
but yeah, it was like like a three star. I'm so sorry. I'm nobody wanted to like this book more than me. Nobody wanted this video to be more successful than me. I don't do videos where I just read one book and like this is why. There's no positive note to leave it on. It's like it was fine. I don't know. Just the ending like <laughs> took me out. The scene with the marker. I couldn't take it. Um, this is, this gives me Mean Girls, Heather's vibes just a little bit, and especially the ending. Um, and more so, not like plot wise, but like, um, I don't know how to describe it. It's just the writing is very intentional. It's just the type of book that is trying very hard to give off a certain vibe. It's very wordy, it's very purposeful. Um, and that style of writing sometimes works for me, sometimes doesn't. Let me also say there was nothing really wrong with this book. Like, I'm not mad at the book. I'm not upset that I read it. You know, I'm happy to be here. I got some fun content to make. I just feel like the stakes are very high right now to like give a good reason why I didn't love it. But it's also so hard to even explain this book. Like, I have explained the entire book to you. It's not plot focused. It's like a girl and a boy who have this relationship that's like a little outside the realm of reality. They each have their own struggles going on at home and they come together and that's it. Like there are friendship troubles and there are, you know, school dances and parties and there's things happening, but the focus of the book is like these two characters and their like their love story and at certain points in the book I was like yes love it swoon worthy but overall I just didn't connect with it in the way that I wanted to I realized that um in talking about this book and I mentioned blue sorry it's getting so dark I really don't know what to do with with the camera situation. It's not the blue and we really are actually similar and I realized as I was reading I was like wait a minute we really isn't blue at all but she's Adam but so is Marshall. Both of the characters in this book are both the Adam from the Raven Cycle and it makes me wonder who Hannah's favorite character is from the Raven Cycle and is it Adam? So Hannah I leave you with this. Um I I will not be taking anything from you. If anything, I should be the one punished for not enjoying this book. Um, or not like desperately loving it the way that I completely understand that you do. Um, but to make up for it, let me end it with giving you a couple personalized book recommendations that I think you'll love. Oh god, what if you don't? Hold on. Number one is a pretty basic pick because I know you've read A.S. King before and since this reminds me of Everybody Sees the Ants, I think you absolutely need to pick up Dig by A.S. King. Number two, because I feel like we have similar vibes with the main character and her place and also it's like authentic teenage time mixed with a little bit of weirdness. You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. Is a must read. Number three, I'm telling you, the similarities between these two, A Million Dunes by Emily Henry, the relationship, the angst, it's on point. Number four, because I'm pegging you as perhaps a fan of 80s movies, maybe John Hughes, maybe I'm off base, but I have a feeling that we write upon sticks by Quan Berry and it's over the topness and weird writing and maybe you've heard me talk about this before because I can't shut up about it but like we write upon sticks by Quan Berry is excellent and very 80s nostalgia even though you nor I were alive in the 80s and lastly, just a little bonus recommendation. I would love to see you engage with some K. Ankrum literature just because I think it could be really special for you. So I'm sure maybe you've heard me talk about these before. Or you may have already made a connection between this like 
weird thing that we both enjoy but I didn't know how else to leave the video besides saying I'm sorry and here's some other books that maybe you'll love and I hope you do and I appreciate the time that you took to uh, connect with me and that's it for everybody watching I love you a lot as a friend I'll see you later thanks for watching <laughs> bye